Patrick Beatty reviews the number one for news. It's Patrick Beatty reviews number one for news. Yeah. Tune in. Get up. Yeah. What's up? Keep the change, you filthy animal. What is up, my gaggle geeks? We are about to talk about some bones and all and Timothy Chalamet, who is, you know, the hottest thing since sliced bread and cannibalism. What can what what could be better on a Thanksgiving holiday than to be talking about some of the most delicious people that you could possibly talk about? <laughs> and I guess that, that works well for the Timothy Chalamet. I'm not wearing my Timothy can get it shirt, Mark. Ugh, you not chill. Ah, so you're slacking that show uh well mark from visually stunning movie podcast how are you today i'm doing very well uh, actually if my window was open i'd probably still see it uh gently snowing outside yes oh, that's the thing it's been starting to snow lately so actually literally just an hour ago so it's oh it's coming your way know, then. it up here for a few hours oh oh yeah because we're, we're, we're our distance from each other is about an hour's distance right yeah give or take depends on the traffic right so sometimes we end up getting more snow than up where you are or sometimes it goes the opposite way but um yeah let's get into this film this is directed by uh luca guadagnino is that Guadagnino? yeah guadagnino that's how uh, that's how i butchered it <laughs> stars timothy chalamet, chalamet taylor russell um Andre the great Holland, mark rylance the great mark rylance um, the you know great Michael great. Stuhlbarg, who I think always shows up and delivers, has the weirdest speech that he could give. To, it's the exact opposite speech from Call Me By Your Name that, that Michael Stuhlbarg gives to Tim, Timothy Chalamet, which is hilarious because that was one of my favorite cinematic moments of that year. Do you remember when Call Me By Your Name came out? I remember when the movie came out. I never watched it. You never watched it? Never watched it. Wow. You, you should check it out. Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm not the hugest uh, Chalamet fan, by the okay. way. Okay, Chalamet, not all day. No, not all day. Not all when, day. When, okay. Chalamet when required. Okay, gotcha. So this is starring uh, Marin, who's a young woman learning how to survive uh, <laughs> being uh, essentially a cannibal. She has this uncontrollable urge to eat people. Her father has tried to suppress it as much as he possibly can. They've been traveling from town to town trying to figure out how to get away from this but eventually she ends up breaking and it comes to a point where he finally says i've got to go and that's where she is now on her own trying to go through life doing this the story very gothic very dark at the beginning that i really i loved the tone of this film i have to say yeah i and i can see that here this the, the funny thing about this film uh -oh. is that <laughs> look here here's the thing this film is beautifully shot, wonderfully acted. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why this movie exists. Um, <laughs> I, don't I you really, say that about really every don't. movie? No, no, I, I really, really don't. Um, <laughs> because I, I don't. Like the emoji movie. Why could that exist? You know, why did that exist? Yeah, I, 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 I guess I, there's re there's more. Shockingly, reasons. I knew the emoji movie would suck, and therefore I completely avoided it. They said, "Oh, I said, oh, they're making an emoji movie. I just don't care." Uh, <laughs> but this one, I was like, "Okay, it's interesting," but I don't know what the. What... Careful. Look, if if this is okay, so <laughs> if if this is a metaphor, yes, for anything. Okay. And insert anything here. It's a terrible metaphor. Um, because they couch it in this YA romance. Yeah. As well. So now we're romanticizing the thing. And there has to be a better metaphor for that. Um, we look, we as a society are just now coming to terms with the fact that teenage girls don't understand that they don't need to idolize Harley Quinn and Joker. Um because that is I not suppose, a healthy relationship. But I, I don't think that I think um, that is something that we can't escape ever now. I think no, that's I, comic fandom. That's I, I know, but but you don't romanticize that you shouldn't romanticize that relationship. I don't know that you need to romanticize Re romanticizing animals. the Joker Harley relationship. Yes, that that's problematic. But this I get what you're meaning, but at the same time, you've have you seen Let the Right One In? Yes. So this to me felt like let the right one in. Uh, see what that the okay so the children are okay here's okay let the right one in is vampires 
Yes. So, right? I, and I saw I, this I, as like I need. A, a, a I, I am an undead universe. creature. I am an undead creature that needs to to consume human blood to survive. Right. This is like a vampire that goes all the way. Well, no, because this is a person that will age but, normally and eventually die. Mm. Um, and this is not. I enjoy eating human flesh. This is there is a compulsion akin to a drug addiction um, that the only way to avoid eventually eating human flesh is to what is it run or you know lock yourself up and we see both of those mm -hmm. well uh, even then film. you start eating your own your own yes body parts and stuff. so this is a little bit and eventually you age you get old and you die well now here's the thing though the, the uncontrollable urge exists in let the right one in with the with the daughter but that's a survival the, issue. That's literally they a, will this die. This is a similar thing because survival, it, in the sense that she was going from town to town, that now she was completely on her own yes. and still having she didn't she wasn't able to protect herself. But this until but the, that point, it, it's the romanticization of the relationship that is the issue. That is my issue, not the issue. I. I don't speak mm. forever. I feel My like we issue. need to get into spoiler territory a little bit for this. Can we just, let's be bad. Okay. So I, I have to say for this relationship specifically, because in the end they decide they want to try to live a life without doing it. That, that to me means that the, the relationship had an arc much like let the right one in that that turn in the third act with mark rylance returning yes it, it was shocking it was it was so depressing because it was like you were so close to them like having some type of happiness but at the same time everybody got what they deserved what well they were and and in the end i don't know that they actually did not do it i i i mm. think they traveled and did it and, and continued to do it so, so is your argument though that they well what is your argument i guess between the let the right one in character dynamics and these character dynamics because um, there's a love story to both there there's well, a lot of stuff there's there's affection kind of in the first one but because the kids are younger it's not a romantic it's not a sexual it's not passionate. relationship and yeah it's, it's not it, it is it's not passionate it it's in many ways familial Mm. Uh, in a lot of ways okay. in this it is it is out of the gate a romantic and sexual relationship mm -hmm. um sex is is very overarching uh timothy chalamet's character i'll give you that for sure because of this um, director right well and then he uses uh you know and and like i said if there's a metaphor he, now here is 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 the metaphor uh homosexual behavior because he fishes for food you know he finds gay guys and you know hits on gay carnies so mm -hmm. um and goes he doesn't just flirt he's all the way you know so again and you know and you know he takes offense uh someone well, i will say to that it is harder for a guy to get a girl than a guy to get a guy is that unfair to say but but I don't there think are other completely but, unfair to say. but the film also depicts him in a way that implies that he is actually on the queer spectrum yeah well so definitely there, he so he, he uses this. all the tools at his disposal mm -hmm. but if again if that's a, it's a very blatant segment of the film to and then to not for that to not like again what is this a metaphor for right you know what i mean so well, i think there's a lot of there's a lot of different metaphors that they're trying to swing at with this it, it is but that one seems to carry through Mm -hmm. you know his behaviors and, and like i said and that and that's a bad metaphor mm -hmm. um but we, then, i do have but, to they, say, but again like i said you have this the the overt sexual relationship between her and him you have the unrequited romantic relationship um between mark rylance's sully and yeah. and marin uh and i don't know that he would have necessarily wanted sex um i think he wanted a romantic love I think he wanted in, in a lot of ways. The, I think I think van. he was maybe kind of an old school romantic in a lot of ways. It, he might have eventually wanted sex, but I don't necessarily think that was forefront uh, in his that's, mind. That, that, that's a very weird. 
nothing in in defense of Mark Rylance's character. That was a I didn't expect you to go that direction. Before we do that, because I have a lot to say for that. Please one. do. Um, I think Timothy Chalamet and and the oh, who's the actress in this? Taylor Russell. Taylor Russell. She they both have incredible chemistry though. The, oh, they no, like, they, like I said, that's the weirdest thing about in, in a about weird this movie. parallel universe. This is like this is Zendaya and Tom Holland for some reason, right? Like it just it just works where it's like there's really good chemistry here. Um, and I will say that uh, we could see some awards when it comes to like the cinematography of this. Mm-hmm. We could see it when it comes to some of the screenwriting because it's a very tight, well written script. And it's it is an adaptation. Yeah, so. um, Mark Rylance is a terrific villain. Jeez, <laughs> man, he's two times this year he's given me great performances. Oh yeah, the outfit, the outfit. I loved him in the outfit. He's really good. In the I outfit. was all I was all in on the outfit. Oh my god, I still love that movie. By the way, the, this this uh, villain though still gives me the creeps. He he's not I a villain. I refuse to person. consider him a villain in this film. <laughs> this is uh, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mark? He's no. Look, okay, look. If <laughs> if like so the worst here. Okay, he's, if so have you seen video? Villain. This leaked video. There was a video that came out a few weeks ago of somebody that was like that was approached by police after he had called the police, and um, they were like, "Why? Why did you call us?" He goes, "Well, here's the thing. The, this girl she locked me out of her house because I was trying to sing her a song. I was singing the song, and she just didn't want to hear it. So yeah, I chased her. And you know how women sometimes, you know." And like he just went into this whole thing, and the police are just like flabbergasted. Like, maybe you just should leave, you know? Like, maybe, maybe. you don't need to be here. And look, that's what I kept wanting to say to look, Mark Lance. It's like, okay, you know, <laughs> holy crap, you're you just drove how far with her? Like, and at the end, he was about to molest her. Like, he was about to kill her. And then it took Timothy Chalamet to pull. <laughs> I, yeah, we but, have to we have to tell truth to what happened in this. <laughs> so Sully, <in> your <laughs> Sully is not. If, if Sully is, is a villain, if Sully's a villain, then so are so are the other two. So is every yes, other. I, that's the thing. The point though is that they're all terrible people, and yet and yet, but you romanticize you So you're back to my point, romance. But go ahead, you, please now, now. Please pontificate, and I'll shut up. But you you could have two horrible people in a romantic relationship and you buy it like my cousin Vinny or anything like that. They they do that well with this. So I don't think there's any hero like the hero are the poor people that get killed. <laughs> well, look, yes, you can have terrible people. In it, but, you know, to quote Jeff Goldblum, but yes, but when Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, the pirates don't eat the people. Mm, um, yeah. So. That's again, that's the point. It's, like I said, it's the weirdest thing about this movie. It's beautifully shot, it's wonderfully directed. The performances are ridiculous. The characters are the chemistry is great. Mm. Why are we watching this movie? So you don't <laughs> think there's a point to it? I if, if there's a point, it's too buried. It's it's been subsumed by the romanticization of cannibalism. And mm-hmm. that connection is explicitly made. And that's the issue with this film. To me, I think the point of it is a romance story more than anything. Then find a better analogy for star-crossed lovers. That's, <laughs> I do that's have to my say, point. I loved Michael Stuhlbarg's scene, too, where uh, he gets a little moment to to also pontificate, pontificate about basically what the life is like. And you get to see the full dynamic of what this cannibalistic world is, like the people that are just out in the woods doing it the people that are living with society and doing it too, and have found a way to, you know, keep, keep things well hidden and also be like a school right. teacher or something that I think that stuff was pretty good world building. Um, I do think the pacing is slow in, in, this. in spots. It, it gets a little draggy. Yeah. But overall, I think it's an interesting story. I can't separate the army hammer stuff just from a comedic standpoint. No, it's too it's too similar. And it's that makes it unintentionally hilarious. And I'm very sorry to the director, but it, it'll always be connected that way. And, it, yeah. And and that's that's just it's a thing. It's what it, I mean, what are you going to do? Right. The Twilight Zone movie killed people in a helicopter crash. That's always going to be that way. But what, um, what were your final thoughts on this? Like I said, I, I, I think it's going to be nominated for a lot of awards. Mm. I think there's a lot of award worthy stuff in it. I just don't know why this movie exists. 
I just I don't I don't understand why I like said so there has to be a better way to tell this love story. <laughs> this is a I, story I just, I, about a man that was un that was wrongly too, too accused of, of being a creep when he just had to have a girl <laughs> hang out with him for a little bit. Right. It, it was exactly. a simple request. Sully is lonely. <laughs> Sully is lonely. That's why Sully is partly the way he is in this film. <laughs> Um, but it's like also but it's also really brilliantly Robin acted. Williams. Yeah, the one hour photo. Yeah. Yeah. Totally kind of. see that. Do you have a rating for it? What is your rating system? You know, it when Ryan and I talk, you know, it's we'll we'll rate it out of 10 because you know, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes, they always have percentages. I, can do that. I don't like you know, I, I hate stars. Um, I'll go seven and a half. This is this is so it's so weird because this fi this film is probably like a seven and a half or eight that I never need to see again. Mm, I, that probably puts it as but, six and a half. And, and that I can't tell people to go see. Well, this is like the best. This is like one of the best films. I'm not going to tell you to see. I'm not going to mm. tell you not to see it, but I'm not going to tell you to see it. Oh no, Chalamet fans, go to this. Go. Oh, they're going to go. They're going to go, go with your Chalamet hat and and shirts and fan stuff and, and enjoy because all your shallow swings both ways in this one and it and you know let the let the let the skinny man do whatever he wants like he is so skinny my he, goodness i know he's well to be fair he lives on an all protein diet hey oh oh uh, well, but mark where can the people follow you uh, where can they follow me uh, they can follow me to hell in a handbasket i think a lot of times <laughs> but if you want to get in that handbasket over on twitter we're uh, at vs movie podcast you can go to the website vsmoviepodcast.com we're over on youtube and instagram visually stunning movie podcast you'll find us and if you want to listen to all of our episodes anywhere you want to listen just search for us and wherever you get your your podcast that's where we are Right. And while you're over there, make sure to go to the Patrick Bader Reviews podcast and PatrickBaderReviews.com for all the latest reviews, because we're just going to keep churning these out. We have so many screeners, Mark, that we have to do because we're both members of the Utah Film Critics Association, which come mid-December, we will be completing our voting. And yeah, it'll be it'll be a and fun right time. now. Right now we're going through 600 screeners. Yep, and they uh, just if, keep coming. For, and that's and that's the films that we didn't get to see, right? Uh, during the year, I mean, at least for me, it's like, oh my goodness, and I'm having I'm having to learn how to categorize films because I forgot, <laughs> and so I'm having to go back and go, oh my god, that's yeah, that was the documentary, and that was the documentary, and that was the foreign language film, right? It's like, oh my goodness, it's it, I haven't even started a list yet. I I was lucky to to get what I got out in the group chat for the, for the documentaries, but. Well, in any case, I will see you all at the next review. Mark, thank you again for joining. Absolutely, man.